The Waffle Episode Jennifer, age 11, wakes up, makes her bed, looks around her room to make sure everything is in its place, and heads into the kitchen to make herself breakfast. She peers into the freezer, removes the container of frozen waffles, and counts six waffles. Thinking to herself, I'll have three waffles this morning and three tomorrow morning, Jennifer toasts her three waffles and sits down to eat. Moments later, her mother and five-year-old brother, Adam, enter the kitchen, and the mother asks Adam what he'd like to eat for breakfast. Adam responds, waffles, and the mother reaches into the freezer for the waffles. Jennifer, who has been listening intently, explodes. He can't have the frozen waffles, Jennifer screams, her face suddenly reddening. Why not, asks the mother, her voice rising at a loss for an explanation of Jennifer's behavior. I was going to have those waffles tomorrow morning, Jennifer screams, jumping out of her chair. I'm not telling your brother he can't have waffles, the mother yells back. He can't have them, screams Jennifer, now face to face with her mother. The mother, wary of the physical and verbal aggression of which her daughter is capable during these moments, desperately asks Adam if there might be something else he would consider eating. I want waffles, whimpers Adam, cowering behind his mother. Jennifer, her frustration and agitation at a peak, pushes her mother out of the way, seizes the container of frozen waffles, then slams the freezer door shut, pushes over a kitchen chair, grabs her plate of toasted waffles, and stalks to her room. Her brother and mother begin to cry. Jennifer's family members have endured literally thousands of such explosions. In many instances, the explosions are more prolonged and intense and involve more physical or verbal aggression than the one I just described. For example, when Jennifer was eight, she kicked out the front windshield of the family car. Doctors have bestowed myriad diagnoses upon Jennifer, oppositional defiant disorder, bipolar disorder, intermittent explosive disorder. For Jennifer's parents, however, a simple label doesn't begin to capture the upheaval, turmoil, and trauma that her outbursts cause and doesn't help them understand their daughter or how to best help her. Her siblings and mother are scared of her. Her extreme volatility and inflexibility require constant vigilance and enormous energy from her mother and father, thereby detracting from the attention the parents wish they could devote to Jennifer's brother and sister. Her parents frequently argue over the best way to handle her behavior, but agree about the severe strain Jennifer places on their marriage. Although she's a pretty smart kid, Jennifer has no close friends. Children who initially befriend her eventually find her rigid personality difficult to tolerate. Over the years, Jennifer's parents have sought help from countless mental health professionals, most of whom advise them to set firmer limits and be more consistent in managing Jennifer's behavior, and instructed them on how to implement formal reward and punishment strategies, usually in the form of sticker charts and timeouts. When such strategies failed to work, Jennifer was medicated with innumerable combinations of drugs without dramatic effect. After eight years of disparate advice, firmer limits, motivational programs, and medicine, Jennifer has changed little since her parents first noticed there was something different about her, when she was a toddler. In fact, her outbursts are more intense and frequent than ever. Here's what Jennifer's mother told me. She said, Most people can't imagine how humiliating it is to be scared of your own daughter. People who don't have a child like Jennifer don't have a clue about what it's like to live like this. Believe me, this is not what I envisioned when I dreamed of having children. This is a nightmare. You can't imagine the embarrassment of having Jennifer lose it around people who don't know her. I feel like telling them, I have two kids at home who don't act like this. I really am a good parent. I know people are thinking what wimpy parents she must have. What that kid really needs is a good thrashing. Believe me, we've tried everything with her, but nobody's been able to tell us how to help her. No one's really been able to tell us what's the matter with her. I hate what I've become. I used to think of myself as a kind, patient, sympathetic person, but Jennifer has caused me to act in ways in which I never thought myself capable. Act in ways in which...